Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire once again, people. And you find me at the beginning of this episode on a very rough road that's very pothole strewn. In fact, behind the camera, there's a sign that says unsuitable for motor vehicles. Now, if you were able to brave this road all the way to the end, which the postman does on a regular basis, you can see there's a set of gates there. And if you were to go down there, it would take you to Elmswell Hall. Now, that's not the main part of this episode because Elmswell is a very tiny place but it's still worth talking about which we will do in today's episode. Welcome to the parish of Garton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Garton, Triangular Village. This week in the East Riding, we're back onto the Wolds again. We're not on the High Wolds, but we ain't far off. This is Garton, a small settlement some three miles northwest of Driffield, whose name literally means Triangular Village. That's not too far from the truth, actually. The route I walked around this place was sort of a triangle, albeit a pretty oddly shaped one. People know this place by another slightly longer name, Garton on the Wolds. Its boundaries encompass the main village and the tiny hamlet of Elmswell, which was absorbed into the parish in 1935 when Garton on the Wolds ceased to exist as a political entity. The whole thing is now simply known as Garton. This one's only got a small number of things we can talk about, but it was still a pleasant visit. There's no shops or pubs, although in times past the place had two of the latter. Garton still has a fine church associated again with Sir Tatton Sykes, a primary school, two old chapels and a former railway station, as well as a massive mere off the main road through the place. Let's also not forget Elmswell Hall in the adjoining hamlet. Literally the largest landmark of the lot though towers over everything right on the northern boundary with Sledmere. Come with me around the triangular village to see what that could be. We start with the hamlet of Elmswell, which was absorbed into Garton Parish in 1935 after the abolition of the former Garton on the Wolds and Elmswell with Little Driffield and Kellythorpe parishes. Little Driffield, by the way, is now attached to Driffield. Elmswell is not much more than just this very bumpy dead end track that's about a quarter of a mile long. It only really has one historical landmark, and that would be the Grade 2 listed Elmswell Old Hall. However, it's worthy of its own little section. This is Elmswell Old Hall, and it's quite a magnificent building. It's usually off limits to the public, but it has been known to be opened up for visitors. The last time that happened was last year, in April. Elmswell Hall might not look anything special, but trust me, it's one of the most significant buildings in Yorkshire. The ruins date back to around 1635, and they form part of the historically significant Elmswell Country Estate. Parts of that can be traced directly back to William the Conqueror. 
Whilst it might be disused and dilapidated at present, this is of outstanding significance for its historical associations with its builder, Henry Best. It was in this very house where he wrote his farming and memorandum books relating to the full range of agricultural activities in the region. The house formed the heart of a farming estate, the dynamics of which are set out in remarkable detail in those books and they provide a nationally important archive of information for historians studying all aspects of post-medieval rural life. Perhaps the most significant thing about the hall, though, would be the material used to construct it. Although it can't be confirmed, it's thought this is the first ever brick building to have been constructed in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Now that's amazing. We start on Station Road at the old schoolhouse. Education and industry work together in these parts. Schooling in Garton began in 1843. That's when a national school was constructed. It had an endowment of £5, which was the dividend of a £120 share in the Driffield Navigation. The house can be found on the corner of Main Street, and so too can this granite cross. This is Garton's War Memorial, which displays the names of all those lost in conflict during both World Wars. There are ten names in total, eight from World War I and two from World War II. And by the way, the wind was playing havoc with that poppy wreath. So this is Main Street, better known to travellers as the A166. It's the road that connects Driffield to York. Garton would have developed along this road, but the area has been occupied for at least 12,000 years. Archaeological records prove occupation from the monolithic age through to the present time. During the Roman era, Garton on the Wolds would have been more like a small town. It's believed that the Romans even raced chariots here, as well as at some of the other nearby settlements. Let's talk modern transport next as we cross the road towards a brick-built bus shelter. Inside the shelter is a parish notice board, and you know what that means. Garton is in the books, folks. Take it off. And of course, this is a bus shelter, so there's also a service that calls here. Your magic number in this part of the world is the 135, which runs between Sledmere and Driffield. Now we cross the road where we find the old phone box, but this is hardly the main reason to do so. Also on this side is a huge pond known as Garten Mere. Unlike some other East Riding Mears, this one is a natural water feature. It was formed thanks to glacial meltwater after the last ice age. The pond is fed from the north and western sides of Garten. Water flow then continues east and underground until it reaches Elmswell, where it re-emerges as a spring. Opposite the mere is the rather large and ominous looking, in this weather at least, Manor Farm. After that, the road starts to dip downhill and we come to the first of two old chapels. Both have now been turned into private houses. Garton had both a Wesleyan and a primitive Methodist chapel. This was the Wesleyan version and it was built in 1894. Let's continue down the hill to the other one. Between the two is Anstall House, a charming Tudor-style property which was once owned by the Sledmere estate. Although it looks older, it only dates back to 1919 but still has a wealth of period features, including an original range which was once an old bread oven. A couple more steps and we have the primitive chapel on the other side. This was built in 1871 at the cost of £478. It's not known when it closed, but it was probably in the 1950s. It then became a workshop and was used as such until the early 2000s. In 2022, it was sold and tastefully converted. So let's not forget Garton is actually Garton on the Wolds, and even the parish council refers to itself as Garton on the Wolds. Officially though, its name is Garton. That's the uh, name used by the Office of National Statistics, which is why this episode is called Garton and not Garton on the Walls. It's the same thing with Middleton. You remember Middleton on the Walls? Same thing there. Right, now we have been up and down a few hills so far, so we are definitely on the Walls. Not, not on the highest Walls by any uh, stretch of the imagination. But this next bit should be fairly flat. We're walking down Pump Lane now towards the church, which is another one that's on the Sykes Church's trail. Keep that in mind for later. Pump Lane is a mainly residential area with much newer properties than the ones on the A166. Its name suggests there was a water pump of some description in the immediate vicinity, although if there was, it's no longer here. Its presence, though, would make sense. We are, after all, on the Wolds, where there's an abundance of chalk springs. Now, I turned right here in search of a memorial marked on my map. 
I thought initially it was wrong as I found nothing, but then I noticed a tree with a plaque underneath it. This is Peter's tree, planted in memory of a late member of the parish council. Garton's church is dedicated to St Michael and All Angels. This was given a Grade 1 listing in 1966. As with nearby locations, this is another one on the Sykes Church's trail. It dates back to Norman times and it's believed its oldest parts were built in 1132. In the 19th century it was restored by John Loughborough Pearson with funding from Sir Tatton Sykes. Channel favourite G.E. Street later furnished the interior. Inside the walls and ceilings are decorated in colourful murals depicting various biblical scenes. They would have been great to see, but unfortunately the church was locked. Externally the churchyard features this cross. As we know already, this isn't a war memorial, so what it represents or commemorates I have no idea. Here's the lit gate, and if we head through this back onto Station Road, we'll find the modern school, Garton on the Wolds, C of E. Although small, this caters for plenty of villages and hamlets around Driffield. I couldn't find much more about this one, I'm afraid, but I do know it's quite the important establishment locally. It stands to reason, seeing as only two other villages, namely Sledmere and Wetwang, also have schools. And once you turn right out of the churchyard and walk past the school, you're then heading back to the beginning near the cross of the old schoolhouse that we saw right at the start of this video. Now, there are a couple more things I do want to touch on here within Garton Parish. One of them is to the south. If you follow this road, Station Road, well, that gives you a massive clue. Garton used to have a railway station. We'll go and see that. Then we're going to turn around and head up further into the walls because there's something really, really tall on top of a hilltop which just falls within Garton Parish. Let's go. To the south of the village is the former Garton Railway Station, seen here on the right-hand side of Shot. It was on the Moulton Dodger Line, and if that name's familiar, it should be. It's the same one we encountered in both Wetwang and Fimber. Officially, it was called the Moulton and Driffield Line, and it transported chalk from quarries at Burdale and Warham. Garton was considered to be the least important station on the line as it handled fewer passengers than any other. It opened in 1853 and closed in 1950. Once back through the village, all that's left to do is head up onto the high walls, where we will come to our final landmark. The walls around Garton are worthy of a mention here. They're full of chalk springs, which add to the watery nature of the place, but the chalk itself was quite important industrially. Garton had a collection of chalk pits sited on the higher ground around the village which were quarried extensively. It was used for both building and for road repair. Quarrying has always been a thing up here. There was also a clay pit close to Elmswell which was used for tile making and that took place at Little Driffield. So here we are then at the hill, the top of the hill, where we find this thing. Now we have seen this before in Wetwang, but from a very, 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 very long distance. Now we're right at it. This is the Sykes Monument. The Sir Tatton Sykes Monument is easily the largest structure for miles around. Located on top of Garton Hill, this 147 foot high tower was designed by the Oxford based architect John Gibbs. Its purpose is simple. This commemorates Sir Tatton Sykes, the fourth baronet of Sledmere. It's made of both Whitby and Mansfield stone and stands on a motte of rubble surrounded by a dry moat. Its foundation stone was laid in 1865 and the whole thing cost £600 to build. An original iron fence around it was removed in the 1940s, with the current one replacing it in the 1960s. A caretaker for the monument once lived in the cottage across the road. He would often show visitors up the internal staircase to a viewing room at the top of the monument, which is no longer open to the public. Sledmere is though, and that is where we're heading next. See you back here very soon. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. 
You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.